we have flood defences down here, we have ways of physically tackling climate change. I know from conversations with scientists and NRW that the future doesn't look good, that sea levels are rising, that we're seeing more extremes of storm surges and weather conditions. It still makes me feel worried, I still feel concerned. If anything, it's kind of legitimised the fears that I have. Now I'd like to find out what's happening to reduce our carbon footprint in Bridgend Borough. The UK government has declared a climate and environment emergency. It's all come from a loud voice of lots of protesters. First and foremost... The reason we declared a climate emergency and it was to ensure that we did galvanise not just governments but businesses and communities. Wales is indeed showing leadership. It's committed to 80% reductions in net carbon emissions by 2050. We all know in our heart of hearts and in our heads that the actions that we've agreed nationally but also internationally are not sufficient to the day. Stern warned the climate change committee. I think at all levels, uh, UK, Welsh and local government Real insufficient attention is put on climate and nature crises and and how they can help to resolve some of the challenges that people face in their daily lives. The governments need to be facilitating that sense of urgency and facilitating um, people to make decisions that aren't more expensive necessarily but are more environmentally friendly. Ultimately, a lot of action has to stem from local government to, to enforce policies and things like that. And, I mean, to be honest, I haven't really seen much happening here recently. If your priority is, you know, like keeping your house safe or just putting food on your table or something like that, then we can't expect you to have climate change at the top of this list. So I really think it's up to the, the governments and the councils to be able to create an environment in which that's possible. I know the council announced a climate emergency. I just wonder whether you could tell me what that means and sort of what, what policies you have that sort of honour that emergency. It means that um, whatever decision we take, um, we will look at that decision through the lens of climate emergency. So first of all, when we're building anything new, uh, we are making sure that those buildings are net zero. So in Call, we've got the new development at Cozy Corner. That is one of the first carbon positive buildings um, in the county borough. And what I mean by that is that it actually generates more renewable energy that it uses. All our new schools will be net zero carbon schools. So that isn't just the carbon used in its construction, but then the ongoing running costs. And we're also on site at the moment, opening a, a metro hub for buses in Puthcall, because we are trying to encourage more people to use public transport. We recognise that the public transport system is not where we'd like it to be. Uh, but we have to do what we can to encourage more people to, to use it. There sounds like some really positive things happening within the council. Um, from part of doing the, the film, we've actually been talking to the public and to a number of young people, and they don't recognise what's going on within the borough. Um, and there seems to be a sort of disconnect between what, what you've said of what's happening and the community not really understanding what's going on. We know, in particular, how young people are in the main very committed to this agenda they want to make a difference um, and they want to be part of that change uh, in in their communities uh, and we need them to champion that we need them to hold me to account as well and say you've made a lot of progress but you need to make more progress mm -hmm. so we're in a climate emergency and we need action and we need action now and we need everyone to act now So I think there's a lot of 
promising things that are happening in Bridgen County Borough um, from the examples that Hugh listed but also what I see within the community um, I do think there's an overall sense that community want to create action on climate change. We've got all these great community organisations and charities around Porthcore. We've got like sustainable shops like Sust. And there's lots of little pockets where change is happening and people are genuinely like interested and wanting to make a difference. On the one building year, we've had 298 solar panels fitted at a cost of £150,000. And I would presume that in 18 months, they would be paid for themselves. The less I can pay you EDF, the better, but it, people do say, oh, that's good that you're doing something to help out. On this site in uh, Stormy Down, we've got a cluster of renewable energy generations. So we've got wind, solar, uh, anaerobic digestion, all producing energy. We also have a battery that stores the energy. And then we, we use that energy on site for manufacturing, uh, low carbon cement, and we make uh, a fer organic fertilizer. And then all of the energy combines to, to be sent out to the grid. And most of that energy flows down to Port Core. Well, what we want to see in an ideal world would be um, community groups being able to generate their own electricity and then sell that locally um, at a reduced price. So that all those profits made by those middle companies are uh, taken out of the equation and that energy is, is sold directly to local consumers. There are lots of barriers and um, things preventing that from happening. At the moment, there is no mechanism under uh, the legal framework whereby uh, community energy sources or local, locally generated renewable energy can be sold directly to people in that community. Now, were people to be able to buy renewable energy from a local supplier, then all of a sudden you would have this quite strong driver for people to be aware of uh, where they get their electricity and the, the source and provenance of that electricity. Our grid is antiquated and simply does not have the capacity to meet the needs of a society that's changing very rapidly. Now, as far as I'm aware, there's no work going on to increase the capacity of the grid. And actually, it is far better for the environment if energy is generated locally and used locally. And it's far better for communities as well. It always struck me, I've always worked in the South Wales area and around the valleys, we were self-sufficient in energy for hundreds of years and that kept the price down and, and now we rely on the core energies imported via gas to turn it into electricity and, and that is holding us to ransom and we need to take that ransom away to make sure that it's availability and locally produced at a low cost. But I am very, very positive that from maybe five to ten years out for the next hundred years, we, we have the ability to produce low-cost energy and everybody will benefit. But that isn't helping somebody in fuel poverty this winter. People are really concerned about where energy prices are going to go in the future. And so for long-term energy security, as well as um, addressing the cost of living crisis, then this is a win-win for everyone. So as part of this, this project, we've also been talking with young people and they feel that there's a sort of lack of urgent action amongst politicians and government with climate change. From a question of, of leadership, then that's something we have to provide ourselves. We can't rely on politicians who might be governed by other interests to do the right thing. 
we have to become those leaders ourselves. We have to champion community energy, alternative, sustainable ways of living within our communities. The People's Assembly model for trying to engage um, local communities is a very powerful one. We've got an organisation who's a member of ours called DAIG, who carry out People's Assemblies within communities, put together a, a, a report of, of the best possible solutions for that community and then an action plan to to implement that definitely that community engagement building those links bringing people together that's definitely the place to start we are a national lottery funded movement in five areas of Gwynedd um, it's called Gwythni and um, we've been running um, assemblies in these five different areas of Gwynedd and I've been the facilitator in Brofus Diniog. And our assembly question was, how can we in Brofus Diniog respond locally to climate change? And actually after two years of immersing ourselves in that question, I feel like the question should be, how can we in Brofus Diniog build the most resilient future that we can? We had space for 50 people on the assembly and we did our own sortition process to look at trying to make that sample as representative as possible. And we have um, developed a climate action plan for Brofus Diniog that's really specific to this area. So um, six different sort of themes, which are local food, sharing stuff and fixing stuff, energy, insulating buildings, transport and um, of course like nature and biodiversity. You can't respond to the future on some kind of community level that just means like I'm completely responsive to policy made in Westminster. No, we have to be able to make our own policies and our own, you know, um, localised responses. I previously felt disempowered as an individual. It was quite obvious that, that this was not just another lobby group it, it, this all had far more credibility because it felt like we were empowered to get on and do stuff and some of the wisdom that was coming out of our frustrations of wanting to do some of these things was getting fed sideways to those those political bodies or council bodies that we had previously felt were sort of either not listening or getting in the way and actually for any of these things to move forward there has to be that understanding of that wholeness about how do we do something that will work in this place at this time with these people and, and that's actually what's at the core of it and, and through this assembly that's what you're achieving i think the easy thing is to is to raise one's hands in despair and to do nothing that's the easy easy thing um, because it takes effort and it takes um, energy and it takes organizing to, um, to to decide that what is necessary is real change, system change, deep, deep change. And it's the future of young people. It's, the, it's, you know, it's their future to, to try and advocate for. Action is the only solution I see as I yeah, see it. Like yeah. you can either sit and something. just feel like powerless. Yeah. Or you can go and just make a plan, yeah. talk to people and you realise you're not on your own. I think we're all scared of climate change. I hope most people are from what they know. And I think we need to do things practically on a local level. We all need to do something and we can do it from the bottom up. We don't have to wait for politicians to take action. We can all do something where you live and where you are today.